Welcome to the Selectmen's meeting for August 27th, 2013. Call the meeting to order, please. Roll call. Colin McNam present. Bob Pomona present. Sulicio present. I'd like to make a notice that the meeting is being tape recorded. Chairman's additions or deletions, we have none. We have a small modification on 3.8, name change to Terry Roy. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, 1.4, review and approve meeting minutes of July 30th, 2013. Did you guys have a chance to look at them? I did. I have no. Yeah, I have none either. No changes. Entertain a motion. I make a motion that we approve the meeting minutes for July 30th, 2013. Seconded. We moved and seconded. Other questions? All those in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. 715, we'll skip over that one, okay? Um, 3.1, review and approve request from the Abram S. French Fund Committee to approve funding in the amount of $400 so that the committee can provide assistance. Do I have a motion? I make a motion. Don't do whatever you do with this one. You don't say the name, right? No. Yeah, we actually asked Renee to leave the name off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we wouldn't have any issues with that. Just as it's Just written on the, the on the agenda is fine, right? Right. I make a motion that we approve the request from the Abram S. French Fund Committee to approve funding in the amount of $400. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Discussion? Not those in favor? Aye. 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 3.2, review and approve applications from Unitil to cross, alter, and or construct within a town way at the following locations. Can we take those all together? Yes. 40, Turnpike Road for new gas service installation, 550 Main Street and 13 Turnpike Road for a new gas service installation, 6 Terrace Way for new gas service installation, and 10 Barker Hill Road for a new gas service installation. Do you have a motion? Make a motion that we approve the applications from Unitil to cross, alter, and or construct within a town way at the following locations, 40 Turnpike Road, 550 Main Street and 13 Turnpike Road, 6 Terrace Way and 10 Barker Hill Road. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Uh, quick question. Mm -hmm. Are we Is that new bylaw in effect as far as, not the bylaw, but the uh, Yeah, the mm -hmm. change is in effect. So as uh, far as these are just services, so there'll be a narrow narrow cut that shouldn't have uh, okay. really any effect on the All right. condition of the roads. That's my question. Making sure that the road is going to be. Correct. Yeah, we'll make sure that it's, okay. that it's buttoned up properly. Other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 3.3, review and sign contract with air cleaning specialists of New England for installation of an air cleaning system at the highway garage with a contract price of $24,700. This is an exhaust system for the highway garage, especially important in the, in the winter time when the doors are closed and the diesel vehicles are running. Get the exhaust out of there to benefit of the guys that work there. So, yes. The, this came before the Capital Planning Committee uh, mm -hmm. last year. It was, it looked, it's going to be a good project. We, uh, we went through it pretty thoroughly. Good enough for me. Other questions? If not, all those in favor? Oops, I didn't make, get an emotion. No. Well, then do that. <laughs> <laughs> I make a yes, ma'am. I make a motion that we sign the contract for the air cleaning specialists of New England for installation of an air cleaning system at the highway garage with a contract price of $24,700. Seconded. Now it's been moved and seconded. Any other discussion? Not all those in favor? Aye. 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 
3.4, review correspondence from Xfinity regarding digital network enhancements and encrypt encryption of programming. Andy, you want to talk to this? Yeah, just briefly. This is um, We've posted this to the website as well. Uh, just the notice really for subscribers to Xfinity Comcast that um, there'll be some, for some of you, there'll be some equipment upgrades that will be needed as part of their uh, enhancements to their to their system. The uh, On the second and third pages, there are samples of the letters that will be going out or maybe have already gone out to uh, to residents so really just a just a kind of an FYI pay attention to your mail this is legit it's not um, nothing phony baloney about it but um, make sure that if you need to take advantage of the new equipment to keep your service that you follow up with uh, with Xfinity no action needed on the part of the board. Okay. okay. And and this is not this is at no extra cost to the correct to the rate to yep. the customers. That's correct. Okay. okay. Eight point five. Review mandatory referral notice form the planning from the planning board regarding a wind energy systems bylaw to be included on the special town meeting warrant. Uh, the planning board's been working with MRPC, the Regional Planning Commission, on a wind energy bylaw, and they've got a uh, got a, a bylaw that the planning board will be holding a zoning public hearing on, and um, they'll be uh, putting this on the town meeting warrant in uh, in the fall. So, uh, if there's any comments from the board or from anybody else, um, I read through it. It seems. <coughs> Mm -hmm. we're not we're not a great candidate for wind power here um, but it's one of those it's one of those better to have it and not need it than need it mm -hmm. and not have it so it would be good to have in place in case we do get some uh, some interest or the technology really what is most likely to change is the technology could change that makes um, makes wind more attractive or more financially uh, profitable. Mm -hmm. 3.6, declare as surplus the building department's 2000 Ford Explorer and authorize its disposition. We talked about this back during budget season when a uh, decision was made to not replace this vehicle. Uh, it was during the capital discussions. It's uh, it's 13 years old. It's got about 160 or 170 thousand miles on it. It was a former EMS vehicle, and uh, Rich Hanks has been using it for a number of years. But it's getting to the point where it's going to need some substantial work if we were to keep it on the road. So sense at this point we don't need it and in fact even under even if we wanted to under the green communities mm -hmm. we can't give it to another department we are really limited on how we pass along these vehicles so we'll see if there's any interest out there we'll be uh, more than likely we'll be doing both vehicles at the same time we declared surplus a fire vehicle a couple of weeks ago another Explorer so we'll probably put them out together see if there's some interest in those and and so where do you advertise those uh, we'll advertise those on the website and um, um, I'm not sure if we'll use the newspaper or not because the, the anticipated value is pretty low. Um, but um, so people just bid on it. How do they yeah, we'll we'll solicit bids. We'll, uh, we'll put together. Bids? A, yeah, we'll put together a, a uh, simple bid package, and um, with a deadline, have people respond by the deadline. We we did one about two years ago. There was an old, mm -hmm. very old fire vehicle. Uh, an extended cab F-350 or something like that. Um, and we did the same thing. And you know, it's a few hundred dollars, I, I think, on that one. We make it a little bit more on these. Somebody with some mechanical know-how might be able to get these in, uh, in good working shape for short money. Maybe they can flip them. Mm -hmm. Do I have a motion? I make a motion that we declare surplus the building department's 2004 Explorer and authorize its disposition. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Any other questions? 
Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Three point seven review correspondence on the status of the North Middlesex Regional High School construction project. We do this in four minutes, Andy. Uh, sure. Yep. <coughs> um, this is just a brief update. This is on the school website as well. Um, they have a uh, they have a page of all high school related. Uh, information the high school project um, they've been approved by the school building authority the msba to proceed into the uh, into the design phase for a new high school um, so they're working on that now with the design architects and their uh, and their project manager and um, expected to come to the to the three communities in uh, in the spring of next year town meeting and a um, debt exclusion override vote at some point in the spring the timing of all that is um, is still being worked out it may make sense as we we talked about at a meeting a couple of weeks ago it may make sense for the communities to have a special town meeting uh, in March or April in anticipation of a debt exclusion vote that would appear on the on the uh, annual election ballot so but those uh, those conversations are still going forward and um, um, some decisions on that will be made in the next um, I would say the next probably two months or so so but it uh, for those who are not familiar with the project um, the feasibility study looked at the existing building looked at the feasibility of renovating the uh, the building and uh, it was determined that renovation was not a viable alternative not a cost-effective alternative essentially because of the, the cost that would be incurred in in trying to retrofit that 50 year old building so um, the uh, school committee is going or the building committee is going forward with plans for a new school on the same site that would be a little bit smaller than the existing school and then when the new building is finished the existing school would be demolished and um, parking constructed and athletic fields and things like that so um, so there'll be a lot of conversations about this over the coming months and um, as I said a uh, certainly a town meeting item and and a uh, debt exclusion item um, just a little comment on that because uh, I'm on the building committee it, it's important for folks in town to try to tune into those um, those broadcasts of, of our meetings if, if not come to the meetings as well uh, there's lots of information things are moving very quickly it's a tight schedule and we want to stick to that schedule because we want to make sure that um, we hit the the dates that we'd like when when the, the town meeting comes and, and everything else but um, we had a discussion last night um, quite a lengthy discussion actually on um, whether or not to submit a request to the MSBA to go into the model school program and after much discussion we decided against that uh, it would have delayed the project um, by at least 12 weeks just to get an answer back um, and it didn't look likely that it was it was going to um, work for us um, again please please tune into those sessions if you can um, it it will help when town meeting time comes if people are are informed okay and and we're doing what we can to reach out to the community as well and there's lots of info on the, the site too yeah the website they have done such a, a, a fantastic job of of posting things on a regular basis there's diagrams there's plans there's explanations of of what we've talked about um it can be a little overwhelming <laughs> there's a lot of information it can be a little there, overwhelming yeah. but at least you know the information's there for folks so um we're trying to keep people informed anything else on that no we're just looking at the different scenarios that were presented and um, what was ultimately chosen, which was a reduced scope new building and the different costs associated with each phase. And, and the MSBA doesn't, um, 
they, they don't just give things away either. <laughs> they, uh, they came back to us a couple times for more clarification Which, and um, before they approve that as well. So it has to be a good fit. What's the, what's the amount of state funding that they matching? Um, that still is, um, is up in the air. Right now it's uh, expected to be a minimum of 57%. So the other that could change. Is that other, correct? The three, that sounds. So I know it was over fifty percent. I didn't know what the exact. And you get. And then there's. You're eligible for po for points yeah. on that as well, um, for different kinds of things. Um, it's too soon to s to say exactly what it will be, mm -hmm. but um, as you go through the design phase, you find that there are things that you can design in that can help with that reimbursement. They give you a bonus for doing certain things. Okay. Okay. That takes care of 3.7. I'm sure they'll be Let's doing a whole presentation on that. Go back to 2.2. .2. Okay. <clears throat> In your packets, I put together the uh, this little cheat sheet that we that we um, put together. Uh, it's kind of a checklist of the of the items that need to happen during one of these appointments. This is for the appointment of uh, one or more trust fund commissioners, and um, the first two items are taken care of. We've posted the meeting. Or to posted the vacancy rather, posted the the joint meeting. We did that several weeks ago, and, um, and so now it's a, uh, a joint session of of this board and Lynn LeBlanc from the trust fund commissioners to fill the vacancies. So, number one is checked off. Number two is checked off. Mm -hmm. And we are calling a joint meeting with the trust fund commissioners. Yes. Unfortunately, there's three positions that um, need to be um, that should be filled. I have filled one, but I don't have a quorum, so I really can't do anything. So um, Dave was nice enough to fill out a, a form. So if, with your permission, I'd like to have him on board and so that we can get this commission going. So how, is that appropriate? I mean, if there's only one person, yeah, that typically one would, um, by default becomes a quorum, no? Um, it's a, it's whoever is here among the, the okay. two committees. As, as a body. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this board so can't meet without, um, um, without a quorum. Um, but the, um, but the vacant, the committee that has the vacancies is whatever members are available can meet. Okay. So you're nominating? <coughs> okay. Do I have a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Oh, wait, I can't. Second, second. Hmm? Yes, you can. Is it? We as a. Oh, yeah, we're meeting jointly. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Collectively. Um, any other nominees? No, I haven't found any other nominees. Okay. And we didn't have anybody reach out to us to express any interest? Not yet. I'm still here. Okay. So we'll be going through this process again at some point to, to fill the third slot. Okay. So could I get a roll call vote, please? Bob Lamond and I. Colin McNabb, aye. Lynn LeBlanc, aye. Sulicio, aye. Thank you. Unanimous. Congratulations, David. Thank you. Dave Thank you very much. I appreciate it. The candidate that received the majority votes. <laughs> <laughs> Unanimous <laughs> votes with many things. <laughs> um, and so he will fill the position until the next annual election. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And so that, um, do we have to do anything to close that? Uh, yeah, you should adjourn that uh, joint meeting.
Get a motion to adjourn. Before you do that. Sir. Yes. Lynn. Yes. If you email me, I might be able to find somebody that might be interested. But only if you email him. <laughs> no, it'll remind me of it. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so, yeah. Will I find you? I have one. so much. Yeah. <laughs> Will I find your email address in the um, in the town website? I can send it to you. Okay. Thank you, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> Could I get a motion to adjourn the joint meeting? Make a motion that we adjourn the joint meeting. <laughs> Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> 3.8, review and approve one day special license for Terry Roy, BFW post 6538 for wedding reception, September 7th, 2013, from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. Motion. That would be nice. I make a motion that we approve the one-day li special liquor license for Terry Roy for VFW Post 6538 for a wedding reception on September 7th, 2013 from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Any questions? Not all in favor? Aye. 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 3.9, set dates for the special town meeting and close of the warrant. Recommended dates are Tuesday, October 29th, 2013 for a special town meeting and Thursday, September 19th, 2013 for the close of the warrant. And looking ahead to, uh, to the schedule uh, or to the calendar, tried to pick a day that would seem to give us enough time to get free cash certified and all of our um, other items in place and give us enough time to put together a warrant and, um, and also importantly to avoid conflicts that that can negatively affect the attendance at town meeting I like to to try to avoid uh, weeks with holidays obviously the big holidays the closer you get to Thanksgiving more problematic it becomes um, and to the extent that that we know of conflicts for staff or uh, other players at town meeting try to avoid those so it looks like um, like October 29th would be a day that works pretty well um, for a uh, for a town meeting if something comes up and we need to change that we obviously can do that anytime prior to the posting so we did that um, we did that two years ago we ended up moving it around a little bit because of some conflicts but um, I want to at least get it out there so we can give departments and and petitioners time to get mm -hmm. articles to us that works for me that's fine but Susan work for you? I don't have a problem with it. Okay. I don't know if you contracted the moderator. I did send him an email. Um, I haven't heard back. Um, so I know there's you know, a lot of people in... Uh, can't replace <laughs> I know there's a lot of uh, vacation still going on, so... Who's he? He has John fill yes. in if he do, if he can't make it. Though. John Barrett, right? Pardon me? You will appoint a deputy at each meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go. So forward. if that's if that's okay with the board, I'll go ahead and notify everybody of that. And um, like I said, if we need to change it, if it turns out that the moderator is not available, that uh, that day we can. Okay. We can have some flexibility still. Okay. Like motion, please. I make a motion that we set. Um, the date for the special town meeting for Tuesday, October 29th. Um, Andy, do we do the whole, do we have to make the uh, the date of when the uh, warrant article should be in? We should, yeah. Okay. Yep. I make a motion that we set the date for the special town meeting of Tuesday, October 29th, 2013, and the date for the close of the warrant as September 19th, Thursday, September 19th, 2013. Does so, there need to be a time on that? Uh, by bylaw, it closes at uh, 5 o'clock. Close of business. Let's put that in there then. Okay. Seconded. I'd like to
to amend my motion to add the time of five of Thursday, September 19th, 2013 at five o'clock for the close of the warrant. I'll second with that, with that change. Okay, any other discussion? If not, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, 3.10, receive update on the status of the FY12 and FY13 audits. Mr. Sheehan. I've um, put a memo in front of the board tonight. Um, <clears throat> we had talked about this back in June. Um, I don't recall if I did a memo at that time. I think I was, I think I just gave a, uh, a verbal update to the board on the status of the, of the audit. And, and that um, was on the management letter itself. Correct, correct. And that's what I focused on on here as well. Um, <laughs> those are, um, you know, that's kind of the the meat of the audit is the management letter and the and the items that are referenced there. The uh, I spoke with the auditors today. They have got about 95 or 98 percent of the information that they need. We hope to be able to get them the last few items this week and um, they can wrap that up and uh, finish up the fiscal 2012 audit. They've already started to work on the 13 audit and um, so that should come much more uh, much more quickly than the than the 12 as a little bit of a little bit of history and I won't read the the memo to the board members um, Chelsea, if you're interested, there's a copy of the memo. Um, as a little bit of history, up until uh, fiscal 2010, we used uh, our E. Brown to do our audits. The Department of Revenue recommends that you not use the same audit firm forever, that you, you know, change it up every now and, again, now and again, you get a fresh set of eyes. So we did that for the fiscal 11 audit. Um, the first year when you go to a new audit firm typically takes a little bit longer because they have to, they have to build their history, uh, their history with the town. Get to know people, get to know our processes and everything like that. Um, and so, uh, so we started with, uh, with Melanson Heath in fiscal 11. They're doing fiscal 12, and as I said, they're already working on, on fiscal 13. So um, there were a number of items that they, that they identified in the fiscal 11 audit. Those are uh, laid out in this, in this memorandum that I've put in front of you tonight. Um, and there are, they are likely to be repeated in the fiscal 12 audit because we were well into fiscal 12 um, by the time, or almost through fiscal 12, by the time the the audit for fiscal 11 was wrapped up. So we just we didn't have the time to. Um, it was impossible to to address these issues um, in time for for fiscal 12. So I'll I'll go through them quickly. The first item at the bottom of page one is improve the cash <coughs> reconciliation process. Um, that process is underway. Um, reconciling with uh, with the auditors for our books for, for fiscal 12 um, it's been helped and hindered by the new software that we put into place um, we were anxious to get the software in we think it was uh, still the right uh, decision to make at the time but it did coming at the end of the uh, at the end of fiscal 13 it did put quite a burden on some of the departments to uh, to both learn the new software, get the information into the new system, as well as do all the regular work and, um, and do the uh, do the items that are uh, relative to the uh, or relevant to the to the audit. So um, so it's pushed us back a little a little bit, um, but it's been beneficial in, in the fact that it forces us to make sure that, that everything is is up to date as we move into the new system. So um, we expect the, the reconciliation, as I said, for fiscal 12 to be uh, complete in, um, in the next week or so. And um, we've got some reconciliations to do for, uh, for the current year that we're into for, uh, <clears throat> 
for 14. Um, and then we'll, we'll begin to implement the steps that we need to have in place so that we don't run into this problem again and, and get, uh, fall, fall behind again in the future. Um, Question on that, Andy? Mm -hmm. it, it references uh, implementing procedures to ensure that we do not fall behind. Mm -hmm. Are these written procedures? They will be, okay. yes. Yep. And it's really, it's, it's uh, formalizing the, uh, the communication between the treasurer collector and the accountant mm -hmm. um, to make sure that, that everybody's on the same page and, and uh, doing what they need to do on a regular basis generally on a monthly basis. Andy, because of the extra work, has any cost been added to the audit? No. In other words, is it, it's not your typical audit where it's a little bit more involved than it has been in the past in terms of reconciliation and right. other issues? It's taken a little bit longer. It's probably taken them a few more hours than um, than they anticipated or than it but should have. But it's a straight have, contract but price. But it's a straight contract price. Okay. <clears throat> so the extra time and effort does not does not add to the to the cost of the audit. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Um, item two, improved controls over water activity. The, the concern that the auditors had there, and this was something that the Department of Revenue also was concerned about when they came in in 2011, is that you have the same couple of staff people that commit the bills, take in the money, approve abatements, um, approve payment plans, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, they want to, the auditors want that those processes segregated a little bit. Um, and so uh, they're working on that. It's hard in a small department like that, uh, but they're working on that to come up with, uh, with some operating procedures that would, uh, that would segregate those, uh, those duties. Um, it will get easier when they implement their, um, their automatic meter read program, which will be, uh, hopefully will be in place before the end of this current fiscal year. It's currently out to bid now. Um, so once that's in, um, it will take a whole, take a large piece of the office staff's um, manual effort right out of the equation. It will, it will go from, um, from a mobile collection right into the, right into the computers. Question on mm -hmm. on the implementation, basically. Um, just is the water department going to compensate whatever I assume the tax, uh, whatever departments are affected, like the tax collector, or in terms of um, you know paying for. Uh, the water department will still be doing personnel, all of those steps. Personnel cost. Yeah, there's no, none of those steps are coming over here. The okay. water department is still going to do that. Okay. Um, but it will be among the water department staff, those items will be, those tasks will be more clearly set out. So this person does this, this okay. person does so that. No. There's very little overlap. Okay. And if one person's on vacation, it yep. defaults to the superintendent or whatever right. it happens. It's to just, you, they don't, which makes sense. You don't want the same person doing the. It's the whole fox yeah, in the right, house. Right, right. Yeah. Um, and again, and this is not uh, this is not in reaction to any problems. Right. It's good uh, good processes yeah. that we're trying to put into place. The other thing that's coming, and we've had some inquiries through the website over um, over the time that I've been here, is online bill collections or bill paying for water bills, and that will be rolled out for the next billing cycle. So that should uh, that should help. Uh, a lot of customers that want to pay that way. It also benefits us in that segregation of duties, so there's nobody actually handling that, the money for those <coughs> particular bills. Uh, item three is a uh, development of a, of a risk assessment process, and Kim Fales, our town accountant, is working on that. And really that's, that's a standard a set of uh, standard operating procedures and, and things that are, are intended to guard against fraud and abuse and waste and things like that. So um, we expect to have something to you um, either, this, either uh, September or October. So we're trying to, we're trying to get through the, uh, the close out of fiscal 13 and and again with the with the new software there's been some, uh, some lag in that so I'm trying to get those things done and then we'll get that risk assessment policy to you um, maintain tax title accounts this is a um, treasurer collector task and um, this will be 
greatly aided by the new software that we've uh, implemented. Um, and I, I should say that the new software is up and running. We've committed bills through the new software. We've committed uh, the real estate bills that went out July 1, and I believe we did the most recent uh, set of uh, excise bills in that as well. So, um, so we're making good progress in that. There's some more training coming up. They've already had initial training. They're going to have some more training in the next few weeks. Um, so there is, with any new software, there's some growing pains as you learn how to use it and you work through the bugs. But well, you're also trying to do it both ways. Yes. And yeah. So they really fully it, it's especially it. troublesome for the for the treasurer collector's office because they've still got things under the old software that they're that they have to keep running. They've got the new software, and you're trying to keep things separate, but get it all in there. So, um, so they're you know, kudos has to go out to them for the um, for having to to manage all that as well as all their regular their regular duties. Uh, and then finally, the last item was maintain a, uh, an assessor's log of abatements, and that has um, uh, that has been done. Uh, the assessors have set up a log to track their abatements and their balances in overlay. So um, that was one that uh, actually that that was a pretty easy one that that was done pretty quickly after the uh, after the audit came through, the management letter came through. So so that's that's where we are. Um, Can. Um can we firm up the timelines on these, though? Sure. Because um, when we say within the next few weeks, that's kind of broad. Mm -hmm. Okay. I I'd like a I'd like a commitment date. Okay. Okay. And you know, you do what you have to do to make the commitment dates. Okay because otherwise it just goes on and on and then something else new comes up and that you have to deal with. So um, we can get some commitment dates and get an update on that. I'd appreciate it. Okay. Thanks. Uh, the other thing related to the audit, there's been some, some oh, uh, yeah. chatter. Um, and Sue, you had asked me about it, and Colin had asked me about it. Uh, had has to do with our bond rating. Um, we are um, we get our bond rating through Moody's and uh, Moody's Investment Services. They recently put us on a uh, discontinued rating. Or they discontinued our rating, suspended our rating. Um, it has to do with the with the lag in the fiscal 12 audit. We have every reason to believe in talking with our uh, bond council that once we get the fiscal 12 audit done and Moody's gets a copy of it, that our our AA3 rating will come back. Because we're, we're essentially in decent financial shape overall. We're in very good financial shape. We've got good reserves. We've got. Uh, okay. uh, strong, consistent management in place. Um, and so Moody's has, has not been concerned about um, about our ability to pay. It's just that when you know, we've got outstanding commitments, outstanding debt obligations, and um, right. and they want to know that that, um, you know, that we've still got the wherewithal to, to um, to honor those, and so they uh, so they suspended the the rating. Um, it's um, you know it's not something that happens every day, but it doesn't seem to be anything that we need to be overly concerned with. Obviously, we want to be uh, we want to take what actions we need to take in order to wrap it up, get the fiscal 12 audit done for a number of reasons. This being, and how much time after uh, they get you know, um, which kind of speaks to Sue's point. Mm -hmm. The sooner we get this done, the sooner we can get the bond rating back. How much lag time between the conclusion of the audit and Moody's giving us, uh, is there any way, any, any way to project that time frame? I can, uh, I can hopefully get you an answer at the next meeting. Okay. It's going to depend on Melanson Heath's schedule. Right. right. You know, obviously, they have a lot of clients. Right. And um, I know for the last week they were in the field in in other communities. So they, even if they had the data that uh, they needed from us, they wouldn't have been working. Well, on I'm so. sure that in light of the fact that they 
look at the fact that we're taking corrective action to right to and they and they want to you know they're working on fiscal 13 audits in most places right now so they want to wrap up the fiscal 12 audit right here and, right. and be able to move into 13 to get back to the question you asked a few minutes ago about does the additional work cost us more money uh, because it's costing and because it's uh, taking more time from Lance and Heath the flip side of that is they're 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 expending more hours in fiscal 12. They'll probably expend less in fiscal 13 because they've the already started and the systems, systems are in place and, yeah. and things are um, things are moving more smoothly. Okay, so. uh, but I'll I'll talk to Eric and see uh, when uh, what he thinks for a turnaround. Okay. Thank you. Point one one discuss discuss scheduling work sessions for the following work session to discuss funding for road improvements and work session to discuss goals. Yeah, we we talked in uh, previous meetings about well, we spoke at length about the road improvements and, and what we're going to do with that. And Ed and I are working on on um, on that and doing some. Uh, Having some conversations with our colleagues in other communities to see how they how they fund their road improvements. Um, the board, when we talked about that, talked about having a separate session for that sometime uh, shortly after Labor Day. So I don't know if you want to if you want to do that as a separate session or do that within a regular meeting. Uh, and similarly, Sue, you would ask to um, to set up some time to talk about goals and where we are and what in terms of our accomplishments list, goals list. So I don't know if, if you still want to do those as separate evenings or if you want to try to wrap them into a regular meeting, I figured I'd throw it out there for the... I mean, my feeling is we can wrap the goals into a regular meeting okay. as an update and discussion um, but I think the work session that was going to be between us capital planning and FinCom right Correct. yeah um, I, I think that deserves its own meeting all right so why don't you why don't you just see if you can coordinate a date um, on maybe one of our off weeks okay yeah that, would be, that, would, that was what I was gonna say I'd, I'd like to keep it to a Tuesday up if at all possible okay we'll probably um, we'll probably look at the 17th then of September something that we've, we've got time to work with but um, yeah because we need to firm something up to start talking about it seriously mm -hmm. and I'm sure just one discussion isn't going to solidify everything right so it would be there more than likely be there September 17th or October 1. I don't know if the board has a preference, but let's let's go for the 17th. Yeah, that's yeah. Okay, we'll make room. Okay, and um, and then if we need another one, we've got time for another. Okay, okay. and I'll let the FinCom and Capital Planning know. And how do you guys feel about work session for goals within a within a, one of our meetings? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. So whenever you're ready to do that. Okay. Okay. Appointments of personnel and officials, 4.1. Vote to appoint Paul E. Sweet and Renee S. Fossey to the Abram S. French Fund Committee for terms from July 30th, 2013 to June 30th, 2014. I make a motion that we appoint Paul E. Sweet and Renee S. Fossey to the Abram S. French Fund Committee for terms of July 30th, 2013 to June 30th, 2014. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Any questions? If not, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. 4.2, vote to appoint Patricia O'Reilly as crossing guard for a term of July 30th, 2013 to June 30th, 2014. 
make a motion that we appoint Patricia O'Reilly as crossing guard for a term of July 30th, 2013. Second. 2013 to June 30th, 2014. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Discussion? If not, all those in favor? Aye. 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 5.1, Board of Selectmen updates and reports. You wanted to? Um, I don't have anything. Um, yeah, I wanted to, you know, we've lost, recently we've lost a few um, uh, well-known members of the community, Marion Coyview, um, Jesse Hussey, and recently Roy Shepard. And uh, I wanted to just say, in regards to Mr. Shepard, I wanted to give my condolences to the Shepard family. And uh, Roy was an example to all of us of the ideal businessman, civic leader, and most of all, family man. His legacy with, will be with this town for many years to come. I am proud to have known Mr. Shepard, and we are indebted to him for all he has done for Townsend. Certainly our condolences to, uh, yeah. to his family. Well said. Thank you, Colin. Anything else? Yeah. 5.2, Town Administrator updates and reports. Got anything else? Uh, the only thing I wanted to uh, bring the board and the community up to date on is if anybody has driven by the police station lately, you'll see that the roof is being torn off and a new roof installed. We um, funded that through the capital program about a year and a half ago, and um, so that project is underway. They started last week, and they will probably finish up around Thursday this week. So nice. moving along very quickly, nice, neat site. The, the uh, company that, that we've hired keeps a nice, clean site. Mark Mercurio has been working with them, and the chief's been on site, and um, no complaints. They've been uh, very easy to work with, and um, so we'll be in good shape for the next 30 years or so with the police station, at least as far as the roof goes. Nothing else on it's that. It's amazing how quickly it passes. Yes. Question, Andy. Mm -hmm. Somebody said um, there was another tour of the old library. I'm sorry? Was there a tour planned? There hasn't been. I've, uh, a couple of people have asked to come through this week. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, we get uh, we get a couple of requests every year to go through. So, okay. Uh, we generally accommodate, and um, depending on the level of interest, we'll um, we'll look at putting out a, an RFP again for that to see if there's interest in somebody leasing that space from us. Okay. Five point three. Review and sign payroll warrants. <clears throat> I make a motion that we review and sign the payroll warrant out of session. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> sign bills payable warrant. I make a motion that we review and sign the bills payable warrant out of session. Seconded. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I need a motion, please. I make a motion that we enter executive session under general law, chapter 30A, section 21A3, regarding collective bargaining <coughs> and litigation and adjourn from executive session. Seconded. I need a roll call, please. Colin McNabb, aye. Bob Plamond, and I. Silicio, aye. Just a question. Andy, will you put your letter to the selection on the line? On the website? Uh, I typically don't. Well, it's. Um, I can, I guess. I don't, I don't have any objection. Yeah, I didn't read it, that's why. Yeah. I mean, you can put it on the website. Yeah, yeah. I, see it yeah I mean, it would have no problem with yeah. it. Yeah. It would be in the. It wasn't in the packet, but normally it would be in the packet. So, sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Bye.